I'm heading for our second site at East Wall, where yesterday we began to uncover the remains of a medieval bloomery furnace. We thought it might have been damaged by ploughing, but we needn't have worried. It's beginning to look like something very special indeed. Matt, that is a lovely piece of archaeology, isn't it? It's great, isn't it? Can I have a closer look? Yeah, yeah, take a step and get down there. Thanks. So what have you done since we were here yesterday afternoon? Well, we extended the trench out this way to get the rest of the, rest of the furnace. And as you can see, you've got an absolutely solid base of the furnace here. Um, it's packed around with these stones here. So the, the wall of the furnace originally would have come out to about here. Out that side, we've got the slag tapping channel. So all this slag byproduct has been scraped out, filling this enormous hole over here. Jerry, this looks to me like the crater of an enormous pimple. <laughs> what can you tell us about what was going on here? Right, what we're looking at, Tony, you've got to remember, is we're only really looking at the, really the bottom portion of the furnace. Originally, it would have st stood perhaps two metres higher than us, so we're really looking at a truncated bottom bit. But it's really the heart of the furnace, where the really high temperatures we're operating at. And we've got this thick lining which insulates the furnace. And the type of slag that's coming out is this very, which I call crunchy bar or aero-like slag. And what it tells us is that the slag coming out is very, very hot because the, the bubbles in it are actually trapped air that get trapped while the slag is very hot. And as it cools, the air is released and forms these bubbles. So one thing that I'm thinking that comes out of this is in order to get those temperatures, we've got to have water power. If we found that this furnace was water powered, would that be particularly significant? It, it would be very, very significant, really important. There are very few examples of known water powered sites and, as my opinion, none have been satisfactorily excavated. So it'd be the first. This site's getting better and better. Water powered bloomeries are the crucial missing link between the standard bloomeries and blast furnaces. They were developed to meet the growing appetite for iron used in farming implements, household tools and weaponry. To find one here would be a major discovery, but we'll only know for sure once Jerry's taken a closer look at the material coming out of the trenches. The smelt's beginning at our own reconstruction of the bloomery. The recipe for iron is pretty simple. Iron ore and charcoal are introduced at the top of the furnace. As the temperature inside rises, they should react with the clay lining of the furnace itself to produce the blue. At least that's the theory. The only problem is the clay hasn't dried out as quickly as we'd hoped. Only time will tell if these running repairs will be enough to salvage our experiment. In the garden at Furnace Cottage, Phil's finally reached the natural geology in Trench 1. We'd been working on the assumption that the steep bank of sand in here was the remains of the casting area for the Elizabethan furnace. We've got all this sandy material with lots and lots of charcoal, and then over the top of that, we've got a series of, of slag deposits. So the, this is lying on this sandy stuff, is that right? Yeah, this is, this is, this is right somewhere near the bottom. Now it's sort of dawning on me, that sand cannot possibly stand up on its own oh, okay. at an angle like that. It could not possibly stand up on its own. So I think that that sand has been there and then they've chopped through it and then all this slag has, has been dumped over mm. the top before it's had time for that sand mm. to fall away. So this sandy material could be a lot earlier than this slag. Okay, Phil, what I was just wondering is whether this actually, this burnt material is actually the remains of the medieval bloomery that's then subsequently been cut away and fashioned away and then the, the Elizabethan blast furnace debris and casting debris coming right on top of it. Phil's trench captures the moment 400 years ago when the Elizabethan iron makers ripped through the remains of the medieval bloomery, digging a pit to dump the slag waste from the blast furnace. It means we can now pinpoint the location of the medieval bloomery here and the Elizabethan blast furnace further up the hill here. Just as we hoped, Rob's compact garden does contain two furnaces after all.